for semi-finished goods. This way, domestic processing plants and agriculture provide jobs. And along the way, additional domestic industries with more jobs could emerge to transform the semi-finished goods into finished products for export. And ultimately, the debut in Yobe, well, the rest of Nigeria, of course, of homegrown industrial retail grains, similar to Spain's Amancio Ortega, Nigeria's Tangwate. Yes, you remember the, uh, the, the guest speaker, Barit Sababadala, was citing Tangwate along with, with other indigenous farms making investments uh, in other parts of the country. India's Mukesh Ambani and Lakshmi Mittal, Mexico's Carlos Slim, each of whom sits atop a business behemoth, providing thousands of jobs. Increased jobs would ensure mass prosperity and stultify the potential for discontent. Peace will reign and in here. Jobs will widen indigenous tax bases. Both workers and industrious pay tax. How corporate and worker taxation sustains a nation is obvious in South Korea. Here, family businesses, the Chebol, especially the industrial big four, Hyundai, the SK Group, although Daewoo, a pioneer automobile firm, is now defunct. Lucky Gold Star and Samsung are the lifeblood of the Korean economy. Korn Yunjung credits top 10 Chebol with accounting for nearly 80% of South Korea's GDP for the year 2011. Korn specifies this figure to sales, but the taxation multiplier inherent in value-added sales tax and worker salary and ineluctably corporate tax need to be acknowledged and delineated. Taxation has the dual benefit of A, directly enriching the state for perennial infrastructural and other interventions, and B, drawing and fixing public attention to the conduct of government. Taxation enforces accountability in government spending as a corollary Accountability is the cheap and cheapest fantasy of corruption. Full popular glare and frown ineluctably spook and delete the corruption predilection. For public outcry, corruption ends and tax. All money comes from a source very mysterious to the masses. Most people have never seen crude oil. They hardly feel the pain of such money being stolen or wasted. The reverse is the case when it is their tax money. Yes. Wow. Bukola Idowu has correctly, has correctly observed that during the year 2016, Nigeria's distributable revenue to the three tiers of government had dropped in July to around 494 billion naira from 559 billion naira shared in June. Thus, a palpable heat on the oil revenues, which account for about 70% of national income. Niger Delta militants' perverse critique of arms decidedly helped push our economy off the rails. But that is not the end of the story. Earlier government profligacy had long set Nigeria's economy in tail spin. Nigeria's oil mirage came and went, a flash in the pan. Indigenous industrial development requires capital. We squandered our chances to have capital. Failed to make hay while the sun shone. I had long called for savings when our crude oil export churned out $110 a barrel. I remember making these points at various fora on television, you know, at press conferences and stuff. But then, we, there was an oversight. 
Now, via the instrumentality of our sovereign wealth fund, such savings could by now have been successfully riding us out of our, our, our current recession. Dollars would have been flowing in from our sovereign wealth investments in debentures and stocks, in blue chip farms around the world. Remember how Norway used its oil and gas revenues of the 1960s and 70s to empower a sovereign wealth fund, owning shares in over 400 farms across the world, yielding an aggregate of over 500 billion dollar tash of, you know, uh, tons of cash by the year 2010. Consequently, Norway was the only industrialized state that emerged unharmed by the global recession of the years 2008-2009. But in Nigeria, absurdity encroached upon the domain of reason. From legacy trumped parsimony, we frittered away the excess petrodollars and drifted up the creek without a pardon. Worker retrenchment, budget cuts, official austerity have all inevitably coalesced into our ensuing economy of making do. Now, suddenly, yet again, the haphazard benevolence of nature is burning out, out of the days. The discovery in August 2016 of a multi-billion dollar nickel deposits in Kaduna State, which is likely to dwarf our past oil boom. So ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria is about to descend into another boom, which is far better than our past oil boom. Wow. It's about to happen, actually. Wow. Very soon it will happen. An Australian company, an Australian engineering company discovered nickel, a very rare kind of mineral in southern Kaduna state. Wow. And the deposits are enough to bail Nigeria out of her present predicament and to even double the value of our past oil boom. It's all left to us now, left to our leaders to utilize the, the certain income that's going to come. Now, well, whether we invest wisely like Norway depends on our elected leaders. When the patriotism of this administration is reassuringly too sanguine ever to allow the dystopia that, our, that was our oil bomb, with the Buhari administration in the sudden, I'm sure that it is the right time for Nigeria to have another boom better than the oil boom. <laughs> because here you are dealing with a, with a president who who before this time around had the chance to accumulate wealth, but who never did. M military governor in the former Northeast, and then he became uh, petroleum, you know, Nigeria's oil minister in the days of the oil boom, rubbing shoulders with the likes of um, Sheikh Zaki, Ahmed Zaki Yamani, and, you know, the very rich. Arab oil sheikhs, but Buhari emerged with nothing personal. And then, TTF, when I was in charge of Nigeria's primary schools, Buhari was in charge of TTF. And we used to pre present reports to the late head of state general, Abacha. Um, Buhari had the chance to accumulate billions if he wanted, but he didn't. There were moments when the generator in his house would run short of gas. And then he would acquire just one 50, 50 liter jerry can for the night and next. And this is a man sitting on top of over 100 billion naira uh, cash. And this also was a man who cared, escorting, even in those days, escorting vehicles that were conveying PTF medicines to hospitals. He would disguise himself and change into um, some unrecognizable personal wear and trail the drivers.